Hello and welcome to Bowtie Life, where we talk mostly about life in the garden. I'm Bowtie David, and we live in Destin, Florida, Zone 9B. And today we are going to try a second attempt at making banana chips and uh, in my dehydrator. Um, so coming up in future videos, we'll have part three of our monthly garden tours. Uh, in the raised beds in the backyard. Uh, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Uh, for those of you who have already subscribed, you are my heroes. Thank you so much. Uh, you've really helped make Bowtie Life what it is today. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So in today's video, uh, this is, like I said, a second attempt at these. You might have seen a short that I put out um, not too long ago. The first try, um, uh, we, you, we used the dehydrator. We set it to 135 degrees. It ended up being in there for 28 hours. Now, from about 16 to 28 hours, the consistency of our banana chips did not change much. They're a little gummy. Now, mind you, they taste great. I love banana chips. I, I'm okay with gummies. They are very good, but they're not the crisp banana chips that I was hoping for. And so I'm gonna try this again um, a second time. Oh, they taste so, the taste is off the hook. We used uh, half and half uh, lemon juice and water in the previous one and it actually did you can see they look pretty good here um, they did kind of shrink in a funny way uh, they, they shrunk in the middle not around the edge which looks kind of weird but that's okay uh, they're still good uh, but um, anyway so I did a little more research on why uh, things may not have uh, uh, come out as good uh, one place talked about, well, if it's too ripe, it's gonna, it's not gonna get anything but gummy. Now, other places says, well, if you do it longer, uh, you, it'll do it that way, or if you do it at a higher temperature. Now, um, 175 degrees Fahrenheit was the temperature that I saw uh, as the alternative for, for uh, better. Now, additionally, now I have uh, some. Bananas that look almost identical to the previous ones. A little bit of spotting on them. They're really at that point where they're just starting to get tasty. I have one that's a little less ripe. So we're going to be working with both of these to see if there's any difference between uh, a banana that might be a day or so younger than these. I don't know. It's not much different. I, if this set out for another day or two, it would look like these with the little spots. You know, those spots on your banana, what that is, it's the sugars soaking into the banana itself, the fruit inside. And so um, it makes it sweeter. So when your bananas get to this point or a little more spots, uh, it's the best. These are the best bananas. I look for these. Uh, we go through a lot of bananas in our house. Uh, I eat at least two bananas a day. Mrs. Bowtie, she eats a banana a day and uh, we, we like the, uh, the nutrients from them. So anyway, um, the other thing that we did, uh, we actually, uh, I did a little more research on using lemon juice and we ran, we actually used up the end of our lemon juice. I'm not gonna let that happen again. We used the end of our lemon juice on that last recipe, which I just recorded a couple few days ago. And so um, I uh, went to the store. Now we just had some really big storms, tornadoes, uh, what is this, uh, January 9th in Panhandle of Florida, these big storms came across there. Uh, a lot of damage, our grocery stores closed. And so I didn't, I, I went to the uh, Walgreens across the street, which is always open. And uh, they did have some lemon juice, but it wasn't the good quality stuff we normally get. However, I did find, and this was in my research, pineapple juice. Uh, I thought that sounds really good. So I pineapple juice instead of the lemon juice. I love pineapple. This is a hundred percent. Now a couple of other things, you can get any kind of acidic acid. Um, there's a thing called fruit fresh that comes in like a little spice jar. You can get it at the store, most stores. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to come by. 
Uh, I haven't used any of that. I'm, I'm going to be using this. And uh, what I'll be doing is we'll be doing the same thing with this, about half and half of pineapple juice and water. So there we go. I'm just going to pour the pineapple juice in the water, and this will be our dip. Now, what you'll see here in just a minute, mm, I love pineapple juice. You'll see here in just a minute what we're going to do with this. I'm going to set this aside. Next thing we're going to be doing is we are going to be slicing our bananas. Now, I'm going to change another thing. We're going to be doing it at a higher temperature, 175 degrees um, uh, Fahrenheit. I'll tell you what the Celsius is, or if it's not on the bottom of the screen, when I get to that point, I'll tell you what the Celsius is. But uh, I am using a mandolin. Now, a mandolin is really nice because every single slice becomes nice and evenly the same thickness. Uh, I read many places where it said, cut your bananas at about a quarter inch. That's a little bit over six millimeters. And that's what I set this on. I am actually going to set this to five millimeters instead of six millimeters and see if we can maybe make this just a little bit better uh, crispier banana chip. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe it was too thick. It may not have been that. We'll experiment with that in the future when I can get something closer to right. But uh, it did say at that higher temperature, it should take a lot less time. Uh, not the 20 hours that, uh, that the last batch took. And like I said, I, I don't know that the 20 hours did it. It might have been a lot quicker than that. I was just trying to get it crispy and it wouldn't go crispy. Uh, the last eight to 10 hours in the dehydrator, it didn't change that much. So anyway, uh, mandolin, this is just a, um, a, I don't know, fairly cheap mandolin. I got Gramercy Kitchen uh, on Amazon. <coughs> uh, the blade on here, you'll notice I have the guard on. The blade on here is sharp. Be very careful. It comes with these little gloves. Since I'm kind of, I'm doing okay with this, larger size stuff. So I'm not going to um, wear the glove this time. I didn't wear it in the first one. But we're going to peel these and we're going to slice them down to the five millimeters instead of six millimeters. So looking in here closer at the mandolin, uh, again, I've taken off the guard, so I'm going to be careful. I have here a, uh, a drying rack from the dehydrator with a silicone mat. Now, uh, I didn't say in the short, um, but I'm really glad I had the silicone mat because after uh, the chips became a little drier after a couple few hours, I was able to peel them off of here and just put them on a regular rack. And uh, if I had done that to the, just put them straight on the regular rack, uh, they would have stuck something fierce. And uh, so I'm so glad that we have these uh, mats that came with our dehydrator. Uh, it really saved us. Now, if you're doing this like... Uh, in an oven, on a cookie sheet, or an air fryer. Uh, there are instructions online that are pretty easy to find uh, that will tell you to put oil of some kind on, um, on the sheet so it doesn't get stuck. Uh, yeah, these, it was like glue. It really was. So anyway, whoop. anyway, you throw the banana around here a little bit. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm narrowing it <laughs> from six millimeters from to five millimeters isn't much of a change, I know. Um, but if it makes a difference, I have a feeling we'll be able to tell. Uh, it might be a little closer uh, to our desired consistency. I do like the crispy banana chips that, that snap and crunch. Uh, but to be honest... Uh, if it doesn't snap and crunch, I have zero complaint about these gummies. These gummies are just, I mean, the flavor is truly amazing. Uh, you know, we've all bought the banana chips at the store. They don't taste the same. Oh my goodness. Now, maybe one day we'll have a uh, um, Harvest Right freeze dryer and I'm going to try it with that. I know... I've seen people do that and I am, color me intrigued. So this is the less ripe banana and I'm gonna put the, oh, okay, see, I almost did it. So what I'm doing, I'm just dropping these chips in here, these uh, slices, 
and we are laying them out on the sheet here. You do not want these to be touching each other, folks. Uh, don't let them touch. Um, they will stick to each other. I, again, they're like glue. Uh, it's, it blew my mind how, how, how well they stuck to the silicone mat. Uh, yeah, very surprising. So anyway, I'm going to work my way through the rest of these bananas. I think that's everything I wanted to cover here. We'll talk about um, the dehydrator here when we get to that point after I lay this all out. So if you paid careful attention, you might have noticed that last banana I sliced, I did not dip in the pineapple juice. I drank it on purpose. I didn't accidentally forget. I did read somewhere that you don't even have to do the uh, any kind of citric product uh, for this. It just will, the chips will be browner. And I just wanted to do another experiment to see if it would come out any better. You can also do this in either an oven or an air fryer. There's multiple ways to do this, and you can find instructions online on how to do this. Uh, today, I'm going to be using uh, uh, my dehydrator. Now, this is an all stainless steel uh, Septri dehydrator. We got this, like I, I think I said, uh, we got this on Amazon. I uh, bought it a couple years ago, and I've been extremely happy with it. It's very well built. Um, the reason we wanted stainless steel is because I wanted to be able to clean it real good and know it was clean and shiny and well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, and it has a really good clip over here, uh, just a spring loaded clip that locks it shut. And so the control panel is back here and we're going to go, remember, we're going to go on a higher temperature. Uh, it's set at eight and a half hours. Let's see, you hit time. Uh, I'm going to say eight hours. I will be checking it at six hours. The temperature, we're going to go up here to uh, around 175. And so it actually kind of goes to the closest thing. Um, I can't remember how to change it so I can see uh, what the Celsius is for that. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, I'm going to put it on 178. And it will go. Uh, it does have some suggestions on here, fruits, fruit and, and fruit rolls, uh, uh, vegetables, just, just some rough ideas. Uh, this is a bit higher than this thing says to do anything, so I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens here, see if it burns. If this finishes tonight, uh, it is around noon today, and if it finishes before bedtime, I'll record the conclusion of this tonight. If not, it might be tomorrow, so either way. You'll see me in the next frame. So it is three and a half hours later. These chips are not moist, and you see how they peeled off. They're kind of stuck to that silicone mat, but they peel right off real nicely. Leaves a little imprint of the mat on the bottom of the chip. I am just going to be pulling these off of here and resetting on a plain tray, just with no lining. That helps them dry out faster. So I'm keeping everything in the same order. Interestingly enough, the ones on the right are the ones that did not get dipped in any kind of acidic acid, the pineapple juice in this case, and it has the most white on it. That's a little surprising. It's also the one that didn't stick nearly as much. The ones on the left that were dipped in the acidic acid stuck to the mat even more. So there we go. Uh, they were in there about eight hours. Uh, yeah, right just under actually closer to seven, <coughs> excuse me, seven hours. So interestingly enough, you can probably see on camera, these here are whiter than these over here. These have more brown. This one here, I did not dip in the pineapple juice at all. Uh, so it, it is um, crispy. Ooh, and of course tasty, but that's interesting that it's less brown because uh, what I read is that if you didn't dip it in pineapple juice, it would be more brown. Um, this is the less ripe and the more ripe banana. The less ripe, okay, that was crunchy too. These are all crunchy. 
I like the higher temperature, the shorter time. I don't think the ripeness had anything to do with it. And I don't think not dipping it in juice had anything to do with it. So that might be my first successful batch of banana chips. Really good. Uh, really enjoyed that. So maybe that can help you if you want to make banana chips. Uh, thanks for those. Thanks for following along. Um, this video today, uh, for those of you who have subscribed to Bowtie Life on YouTube, you are my heroes. You've helped make Bowtie Life was it what it is today. Um, we're working hard to grow our channel to the next level, and some of you know what that means. We'll be able to do more at that point. Um, for those of you just finding Bowtie Life, um, please be sure to subscribe. Uh, we come up with a lot of the content and I just like documenting what's going on in the garden and, and around the garden. Um, we don't grow bananas here yet. Uh, we may one day. I'm not sure about that. We'll have to see. Um, this uh, channel is my own uh, brain's response to logging. Uh, I've tried journaling. I've tried taking pictures. My brain just doesn't do it very well. Making these videos, uh, my brain really listens to it and, uh, and it helps me remember and know what's going on in the garden. So this is really just a personal um, uh, record of everything that's going on in the garden. Um, so, sorry about that. <coughs> got a crumb in my throat. Another way you can help grow the channel is to click the thumbs up on this video and uh, share it on your social media with others who might like bananas, banana chips, or uh, be interested in preserving their harvest from the garden. Y'all have a blessed day.